Hi, it's Kyle from Bytewing Games, and today we're taking a look at Land vs. Sea. Land vs. Sea is a game for two to four players that plays in about 40 minutes. It's designed by Jean-Paul Jacques and is published by Good Games Publishing. In Land vs. Sea, players will either play as land or sea. Sea is laying tiles trying to close sea segments to gain points, and same for land. When playing with two players, one player will play as land and the other will play as sea. In a four-player game, it'll just be two versus two. A three-player game's a little bit different. One of the players will be playing as cartographer, which scores in a slightly different way. More on my thoughts on player count a little bit later. The game will end once all of the tiles have been laid. Some tiles will have bonus points. So if C lays this tile, they close the segment for land. Normally, they wouldn't want to do that because land scores five points for the closed land segment. But whoever closes this segment gets the three bonus points, in this case C. There are also a few tiles which contain a play again symbol letting you play another tile, or a steal symbol letting you steal a tile from another player. There are additional scoring methods, but for the base game, that's really it. You'll just lay one of these tiles and try to close land or C segments. For a full rules explanation, see my video on how to play land versus C. So, is Land vs. Sea fun? The first thing that I love about the game is the simplicity of the action. On your turn, you're simply going to take one of your two tiles and lay it out on the center board. There's no, here are ten actions, which one do you want to take? There's only one thing you can do. But in that one thing, there's a lot of good decision making. I love the aesthetics of the game. It's a very pretty game. Um, very simple in lots of ways, but they added a lot of fun little hidden easter eggs to movies and different things. There are additional scoring with ships and caravans and mountains and coral, but it's very easy to see those and, and to see the artwork without the artwork taking away from the actual gameplay. I really enjoy the variant scoring in the game. It's a very good simple base game that anyone could pick up, but some of these extra scoring methods make it so that it's a little bit meatier for those who are really into gaming. Another thing that I love is the bonus points. Typically, I wouldn't want to close a segment if it gives you points, but in this game, there might be a reason for me to actually do that because I can get points by semi-helping you. The game is really good at all player counts. The two-player game is a nice head-to-head -head battle between the two players. In a four-player game, you're playing on teams, but there's limited communication, and so one player can't dictate what the other player should do, so each player can make the meaningful decisions, which I love in games that are cooperative like this. In a three-player game, it's a little bit more cutthroat, a little bit more defensive, where you have to make sure other players aren't getting points as much as you're making sure that you are getting points. Um, so a slightly different dynamic, but I think the game plays really well at all player counts, and there's a lot of player interaction in the game because what you do really determines what the other person can do. On to the cons. My first very minor complaint is that when I play this game, I lay the tile and all the other tiles shift around on the table. Now, maybe if I had a, a mat on my table instead of just playing on the hardwood table, it would be a little bit better. Not a big deal, just a minor complaint. Another semi-complaint is that the game's a little bit mean. And I shouldn't even really say this as a complaint or a negative of the game. It's just kind of what it is. My family tends to play games that are a lot more, you do your best and I'll do my best and we'll see who wins in the end. And Land vs. Sea isn't that type of game. You have to actively try to thwart the other person's plans. Otherwise, they're going to be better than you. You have to know what they're doing. And so I, in lots of ways, think this is actually a good thing. There's lots of player interaction. But it is a little bit more of a mean game. There's also slightly limited decision making. And this is a little bit of a catch-22. Because what I love is that, hey, on your turn, you simply lay a tile. But that also means on your turn, all you get to do is lay a tile. Like There's not a ton of decisions. And there is of where you lay the tile, but as far as do I want to play this game every day, I don't know because I, you're kind of just doing the same thing over and over, and there's a lot of fun decisions, but it can get a little bit repetitive. Overall, I give Land vs. Sea four stars. I think it's a really solid game. The decision making, the quick play time, any family that says they like board games will like Land vs. Sea. And for those people that are even more into gaming, the additional scoring methods help to add a little bit more depth to it. Lots of people have compared it to Carcassonne, and there's a few great reviews out there comparing it. If you've played both Carcassonne and Land vs. Sea, I would love to hear what you think about it.
go ahead and let me know in the comments below. Until next time.